This is the Check It Out podcast. We're doing a series on Max Brooks's novel World War Z, an oral history of the zombie war, which is our upcoming one book selection. I'm Troy Swanson. I'm Tish Hayes. And I'm Joe Malarkey. And we are joined by our, by our special guest, Jason King. Hello, Jason. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Jason's a faculty member in developmental math and teaches geography and is a renaissance man of many topics, including zombies. And we're talking about zombies. So uh, maybe we should start at the beginning, and uh, Jason, tell us your take on the origins of zombie narratives in our society. Ultimately, the idea of a zombie is that there's an inanimate thing that's been re-imbued with life to wreak havoc on what's around us. If we think of it that way, there's all kinds of stories that fit the bill. There's In the Talmud, there are stories of the golem, creatures mm-hmm. that were almost Frankenstein-like, which were created to do a task, and then that task got out of hand and it had to be destroyed. It's also in the Brothers Grimm like that. The word zombie itself kind of fits more into that realm than in the one that we would think of in a book like World War Z. The zombie comes from West African culture where a sorcerer would imbue a dead dead object, a dead person with life, and it would be controlled usually to do some form of work because labor and the ability to control labor was meant with money, then the person would have a lot of money. I think that in kind of our more modern thoughts of zombies as being creatures that kind of get in mobs and attack everybody and the people that they attack become a part of that mob, you can see it more in, say, something like Daniel Defoe in the Journal of the Plague Year or in stories of rabies. In kind of a more modern thought beyond that, the the zombie film, which is kind of more what we see as far as zombie culture goes, there's White Zombie, which was usually the first movie thought of as being a zombie food, zombie food, (laughs) zombie film, zombie film. And what year was that? That was 19... Sometime in the 30s, I believe. Not 100% sure. We have it in the library. But I think there's a film that maybe even would predate that a little bit called Jacques Hughes. It's a movie by Abel Gantz. And it was a movie where French soldiers who were killed would return back from the trenches of World War I to accuse everyone in a mob sort of a format of of betraying what they died for. If you think about it, the the World War I typical soldier, a big group en masse, they couldn't run because they had all these heavy things that they were carrying. It kind of fits the bill of a zombie, doesn't it? Mm, It does. And, and so then, then take the, the zombie story into the into the 20th century. What's the the, the key steps in the in, especially in the films that we think of today what, that define the rules for zombies? The big rule that people often talk about is: Are zombies faster or are they slow? Do they run or do they walk? I think beyond that, George Romero is really kind of the linchpin where. Without him, we wouldn't have the classic zombie story at all, as far as a film goes, with Night of the Living Dead. After that, some of his revisions, and he was largely the one making them until about the 70s, were Dawn of the Dead, which was used as kind of an idea behind some Italian horror movies, just called Zombie, made by Lucio Fulci. From there, from Dawn of the Dead, it seems like the genre spread very quickly, and many, many different cultures, Central Europe, Russia, Japan, all have their own unique zombie kind of cultural ideas now. One of the things that I found fascinating is I've um, kind of reviewed zombie stories uh, with this one book is just the the scope of the topics that um, zombie stories touch and how zombies are used as a metaphor. And uh, I'm wondering, maybe we could just kind of give a brief broad stroke to some of those different themes. There's so many, like vampires or like werewolves or anything, a lot of times horror is meant to kind of shine the mirror on us and see what exactly we can relate to and what's something that we can't relate to. I think all horror movies are meant to do kind of two things. One is help us or make us confront the knowledge that we're going to die and the other one is we use it as that mirror to see ourselves and zombies are kind of the perfect nexus of that some of the the major themes that I think are seen in most zombie films and in in zombie media the, the biggest one is probably individualism versus collectivism the idea that the individual is pitted against a, a larger group in society that 
it's going to be at odds with. Zombies are also in some ways kind of perfected humans, because as opposed to a human, which is selfish, greedy, thinking about themselves. And one of the big problems in any kind of a zombie movie is most times you don't have to worry that much about the other zombies. It's the other humans you got to worry about, because they're the ones that are going to betray you and, and leave mm. you to die. But zombies aren't like that with themselves. They are completely based around just fulfilling their needs. They work together. They have a common goal that they pursue. So that's, I think, another big theme in zombie stuff. Diffusion, certainly any sort of an idea that spreads wide or any sort of an illness that spreads can be talked about with diffusion. There's also this sense of myopia that's involving with a lot of the zombie films. If you think about it, a person that comes back to life and that walks really, really slowly, if it's only one of them, you should be able to deal with that pretty well. Mm -hmm. If we knew that at the beginning, then any sort of a zombie outbreak would probably be over very quickly. But it's just not that sort of knowledge that people that initially begin sort of have. There's also the leveling of, of catastrophic events as far as a society, where rich people almost always in zombie movies tend to do very poorly. <laughs> it's always... It, Romero in particular yeah. was very fond of sort of a uh, rural culture. I, I don't want to use the term uh, hillbillies necessarily because it's such a pejorative term, but Romero was very clear in several interviews that he thought that the people that could be described as hillbillies would be the ones that would make it out. And mm. all the rich people, all the the genteel, the urbane types, they'd be the ones that would be the first to go. They live a more self-sufficient, rural life, not use weapons, uh, fix things, right? Like, this is the stereotype that, uh, that you see come through in a lot of stories that, you know, living in the high-rise in the city isn't the best place to be during the zombie apocalypse. Definitely. Definitely. Um, there's some other ones. Different cultures have different aspects of it. In Japan, there's always this sense of youth culture versus a traditionalist culture. Um, the best movie that would be an example of this would be one called Stacy. I don't think it's a very good zombie film, but people <laughs> opinions vary. In Italian films, often colonialism is brought into par when there's sort of a mixture of the North American zombie versus the... Uh, sort of Italian, sort of a sense of zombie, or even a Haitian or West African zombie. Consumerism is often another thing that's brought up. With Dawn of the Dead, for example, there's the basic story of, of Dawn of the Dead is you go into a mall, and then you become a consumer, mm. and then a biker mm -hmm. gang comes in, and then you've been so thoroughly placated with consumerism that you stop remembering how to deal with zombies. So, <laughs> but there's other ones too. There's so many I could go on could, about this forever. <laughs> could we talk a little bit about how World War Z fits into this genre? World War Z is a really interesting branch of literature because most zombie films, most zombie books, especially in North America, deal with the individual against the rest of the world. When you read World War Z, you don't get the sense that that's how it is at all. Is it's a lot more of a, a difference in cultures. But a lot of the cultures that are more successful end up being where the government helps individuals to kind of come together and deal with things. So you can definitely see some of the elements of, say, Studs Terkel's Why We Fight in the book. It's, it's a really unique take on it, and I enjoy it a lot. I think it's going to be a big surprise to a lot of people reading it. Great. You know, Jason, some of the modern uh, or really recent films take the zombie idea and kind of move it fr away from this traditional view of the zombie as the, you know, the mass coming to just eat our brains and, and actually move the zombie into, you know, characters that are maybe somewhat sympathetic. I'm thinking like Zombieland and I think Warm mm. Bodies is mm. one of the most recent. Warm Bodies, yeah. Like, what do you think about that, the way it relates back to... Um, the history of the zombie and like so where are we going and why do you think we're going there well I think that as far as dealing with a zombie in a mob sort of a sense I think a lot of times that's been dealt with so frequently that new ideas have to be brought into it there have certainly been new ideas brought before uh, Return of the Living Dead is kind of more of a campy funny sort of a movie but in there, zombies demonstrate the capacity to learn, to 
manipulate complex tools to think to communicate. Uh-oh. There's even a uh-huh. exactly you know our numbers up. There's one scene where even you know they ambush human beings and then call on a CB radio to get more coming. And this is from somebody that's wearing a Civil War uniform. So as, <laughs> as funny as it is, I think that there's definitely a sense. And I think that that goes back kind of a long ways, even as far as Day of the Dead, you know, Romero's third zombie movie. He was already starting to explore some of the ideas of zombies learning and zombies using tools. And in Land of the Dead, some of them even fire weapons. So, so even scarier. Even scarier. <laughs> right, right. And, and that's one of the big things beyond any zombie movie is there's always the sense that, well, they're going to be slow, they're not going to be able to communicate, they're going to eat brains, but then they start running or then they start using tools, and that's really kind of more of the aspect of what I think horror is, is not knowing. Mm-hmm. Because I think that the old zombies, mm-hmm. I have a nephew that is five years old, and he, he says that he's a bomby and he runs around, and it's just not scary to him at all. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, I think, you know, as, as you started out saying, we've had zombie-type stories throughout history, and mm-hmm. we followed that through. But it seems like, and maybe this is just a misperception, but it seems like zombies are pretty popular right now in, in mainstream discussion. I think you know, Walking Dead is definitely um, part of that. Do you have any thoughts on why we're seeing this increase in zombie narratives at this time? Like what makes them so hot right now? I think some of it could be the, the Great Recession and sort of an economic decline where people are more interested in making sure that as they discover they have limited means that they can do more things than they would have been able to before. That could be one reason. Um, I think that in some ways, zombies are a more family-friendly sort of a horror element. Mm. Obviously not, say, the Lucio Fulci zombies or even the Flesh Eaters ones, but just having a creature that you can put in green makeup and just walks around really slow. I think a lot of kids find them cute. (laughs) Even in this... Uh, this current year there are so many different movies about sort of an apocalypse or an Armageddon that I think that zombies really fit the bill as far as if we're going to have some sort of an Armageddon this makes for a a good kind of sense for one Mm. I've read this theory that I love that um, that one of the the contrasts with like uh, with zombies is it's kind of this leaderless horde and I think it's and we're, when we're in this networked world that really sure. emphasizes the wisdom of the crowd kind of thing, like mm. we, we all come together, no single person, we make Wikipedia, and it's amazing, where the <laughs> zombies are kind of the negative side of that social networked world, right, that, that uh, representation of the mindless mass coming at you and you're the individual standing up to it. I, I, maybe that's just reading more my personal views into it than anything, but um, I, I find that an interesting uh, possibility. It's so interesting because Night of the Living Dead was almost a contemporary with Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which in some ways they'd explored such similar ideas, but Invasion of the Body Snatchers has really come to a lot of people's understanding as being all about communism, whereas zombies never really did that. That was more the positive aspect of collectivism, whereas Invasion of the Body Snatchers felt like more of the more of the negative aspects of it. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, it's a good contrast. Good contrast. So, if our listeners were going to go out and they wanted to hit the the big, monumental films, books of the zombie <laughs> narrative, what's the what are the the key ones they shouldn't miss? Oh, I I don't know. I have a couple that I like a lot. I would say Richard Matheson's I Am Legend is a great one to start with. They're not classic zombies because they think, they reason, and I believe they're vampires in there, but they act like much more zombie sorts of things. Um, I think the original Dawn of the Dead is fantastic, too. Night of the Living Dead is a fantastic movie, but I think Dawn of the Dead, for me personally, I think it's got a little bit more weight. The remake was really good, too. I was pretty worried when it came out, but it ended up being pretty fantastic. But there are over 600 zombie movies that are in the Internet Movie Database, so (laughs) many of them are pretty bad. Some of them are really short. Some of them are made on budgets that you could probably go out to eat at a nice restaurant or you could make a zombie movie. But there's something out there for everybody, I think. 
Yeah. So follow your interests, right? Exactly. Okay. Um, any closing thoughts? Okay. With that, thank you, Jason, for coming in and talking with us. I think it's going to be a fun year uh, thinking about zombies with this one book. Uh, there's copies of World War Z for checkout in the library and for sale at the bookstore. Please visit our website, www.morainevalley.edu slash WWZ. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much.